Hello, hello. Welcome to Godcast. It's not a broadcast. It's not a podcast. It's about God. It's Godcast. I'm Charlie, and uh, appreciate you checking this out, and I hope you're encouraged by God's Word, and I hope that you share it, not for my sake, but just to get God's Word all over social media. It'd be wonderful, wouldn't it? I pray that you might do this yourself, too. Just read a chapter a day in order. Go through the New Testament, because that's where our salvation is in the New Testament. I started with the book of Luke. We're on Luke chapter 6 now. Let's go to the, let's go to the one that started it all. You, Father, it's all about you. It's all about you. Thank you for another great day. Thank you so much for another day, even, just to be breathing your air, your oxygen you made for us, the way you brought it all together. Undeniably you. Thank you for this time. Please bless it, Lord. Please give us your Holy Spirit so we can really understand it and keep it with us. Retain it, at least in our subconscious. It'll be there when we need it. When the Holy Spirit prompts us to speak out boldly for you, give us that courage, Lord, please. As I know you will give us the words to speak. You promised that and you've shown it time and time again. Thank you, Father, for this opportunity. Please forgive us for our sins. And I, we forgive those who have sinned against us. In your name, Lord Yeshua, Christ Jesus, amen and amen. All right. Here we go. Luke chapter 6. I'm going to get my phone up. It shut off while we, while we were praying. Now it happened that he was passing through some grain fields on a Sabbath, and his disciples were picking the heads of grain, rubbing them in their hands, and then eating the grain. But some of the Pharisees said, Why do you do what is not lawful on the Sabbath? And Jesus answering them said, have you not even read what David did when he was hungry, he and those who were with him? How he entered the house of God and took and ate the consecrated bread, which is not lawful for any to eat except the priests alone, and he gave it to his companions. And he was saying to them, The Son of Man is Lord of the Sabbath. Now that most assuredly freaked them out. Verse 6, on another Sabbath, he entered the synagogue and was teaching, and there was a man there whose right hand was withered. The scribes and the Pharisees were watching him closely to see if he healed on the Sabbath so that they might find reason to accuse him. But he knew what they were thinking, and he said to the man with the withered hand, get up and come forward, and he got up and came forward, and Jesus said to them, I ask you, is it lawful to do good or to do harm on the Sabbath, to save a life or to destroy it? After looking around at them all, he said to him, stretch out your hand, and he did so, and his hand was restored, like just like that. And they themselves were filled with rage and discovered together what they might do to Jesus. It was at this time that he went off to the mountain to pray. And he spent the whole night in prayer to God. And when they came, and when day came, rather, he called his disciples to him and chose 12 of them. Wow, he prayed all night. He called his disciples to him and chose 12 of them, whom he also named his apostles. Peter, whom he also named, or Simon, who he also named Peter, and Andrew, his brother, and James, and John, and Philip, and Bartholomew, Bartholomew, and Matthew, and Thomas, James, the son of Alphaeus, and Simon, who was called the Zealot, Judas, the son of James, and Judas Iscariot, who became a traitor. 
Jesus came down with them and stood on a level place, and there was a large crowd of his disciples and a great throng of people from all Judea and Jerusalem and the coastal region of Tyre and Sidon who had come to hear him and to be healed of their diseases. And those who were troubled with unclean spirits were being cured, and all the people were trying to touch him, for power was coming from him and healing them all. And turning his gaze toward his disciples, he began to say, Blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who hunger now, for you shall be satisfied. Blessed are you who weep now, for you shall laugh. Blessed are you when men hate you and ostracize you and insult you and scorn your name as evil for the sake of the Son of Man. Be glad in that day and leap for joy, for behold, your reward is great in heaven. For in the same way their fathers used to treat the prophets. But woe to you who are rich, for you are receiving your comfort in full. Woe to you who are well fed now, for you shall be hungry. Woe to you who laugh now, for you shall scorn and weep. Woe to you when all men speak well of you, for their fathers need, or their fathers used to treat the false prophets in the same way. Bam. But I say to you who hear, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, pray for those who mistreat you. Whoever hits you on the cheek, offer him the other also. And whoever takes away your coat, do not withhold your shirt from him either. Give to everyone who asks of you, and whoever takes away what is yours, do not demand it back. Treat others the same way you want them to treat you. If you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners love those who love them. If you do good to those who do good to you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners do the same. If you lend to those from whom you expect to receive, what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend to sinners in order to receive back the same amount, but love your enemies and do good and lend expecting nothing in return and your reward will be great. And you will be sons of the Most High for he himself is kind to ungrateful and evil men. Be merciful just as your Father is merciful. Do not judge and you sh will not be judged. And do not condemn and you will not be condemned. Pardon and you will be pardoned. Give and it will be given to you. They will pour into your lap a good measure pressed down, shaken together and running over. For by your standard of measure, it will be measured to you in return. And he also spoke, to a, spoke a parable to them. A blind man cannot guide a blind man, can he? Will they not both fall into a pit? A pupil is not above his teacher, but everyone, after he has been fully trained, will be like his teacher. Why do you look at the speck that is in your brother's eye, but do not notice the log that is in your own eye? Or how can you say to your brother, Brother, let me take out the speck that is in your eye, when you yourself do not see the log that is in your own eye. You hypocrite. First take the log out of your own eye, and then you will see clearly to take out the speck that is in your brother's eye. For there is no good tree which produces bad fruit, nor, on the other hand, a bad tree which produces good fruit. For each tree is known by its own fruit. For men do not gather figs from thorns, nor do they pick grapes from a briar bush. The good man, out of the good treasure of his heart, brings forth what is good. And the evil man, out of the evil treasure, brings forth what is evil. For his mouth speaks from that which fills his heart. Why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not do what I say? Everyone who comes to me and hears my words and acts on them, I will show you whom he is like. He is like a man building a house who dug deep and laid a foundation on the rock. And when a flood occurred, the torrent burst against his ho that house and could not shake it because it had been well built. But the one who has heard and has not acted accordingly is like a man who built a house on the ground without any foundation. 
and the torrent burst against it, and immediately it collapsed, and the ruin of that house was great. If we love him, we will follow what he says. If we love ourselves more, we will do what we want to please ourselves, despite what he says. That's just it. Tomorrow, chapter 7, Lord willing, 9 a.m. Pacific Time. Talk to you then.